active function of these and gentlemen. In module three, we'd like to provide you with an overview of the safety requirements specification. First of all, categorize the safety requirements specification in the IEC 61511 safety life cycle and the safety planning. Concrete specification requirements for the safety integrity of the system to be developed have resulted from the previous phases such as hazard and risk assessment. In addition to safety planning, change management is an essential planning tool that should help detect specification errors early on and eliminate them. The specification requirements from the protective functions result from the specific properties of the process, as well as the specific operating conditions, such as the climatic conditions. Using excerpts from safety specifications, we would like to motivate you when it comes to creating your own safety specification. A test plan is required to maintain a permanently effective protective function and the required safety integrity. If possible, test planning starts as early as the safety specification stage. As is usually the case, the module concludes with a brief summary. In IEC 61511, the requirements for the safety requirements specification are summarized in sections 10 and 12. Section 10 describes the general requirements and section 12.2 describes the special requirements for the safety requirements specification for application software. The safety specification is the technical part of the product requirements specification that characterizes the features and requirements of the safety system to be developed. Safety planning takes place at the start of the project. In order to achieve functional safety, a safety plan serves to clearly regulate the measures in the life cycle, a set of criteria for quality assurance, and responsibilities. I remember a test stamp from a plant operator with the text seen. In terms of the documentation completeness check, this test mark is sufficient. However, if aspects of the content are to be inspected, the test task would have to be specified, and the test result in reference to the set of criteria would need to be recorded. In phase two of the safety life cycle, the risk assessment is already complete. And in our example, it has been determined that a protective system to secure the storage tank against overfilling by way of a SIL-2 PLT safety device should be developed. The risk assessment is thus the trigger for the safety requirements specification in a customer requirements specification. Special operating conditions such as starting and shutting down the system, as well as maintenance and testing, must be taken into account. The customer requirements specification describes as precisely as possible the desired properties of the protective function to be planned and it is updated by the contractor in a product requirements specification and following startup, for example, in the operating instructions. Depending on the safety integrity level of the protective function, in section 11 of the IEC 61511, special requirements are made for the technical design. These include General requirements, for example, separation of protective functions from operating functions, servicing and testing. System behavior upon detection of an error. Requirements for hardware error tolerance. Selection of components and field devices. Interfaces. Servicing and test equipment. Probability of failure of safety functions. Let's be honest. With such simple functions, do you really need a safety specification? No. If the customer and contractor are from the same organizational unit, trust each other implicitly, and do not have any firm targets in terms of timelines or finances, they can simply get on with it in good conscience. 
Unfortunately, with safety systems, this is almost never the case. Performance of work is offered at a firm price. Deadlines must be kept. The specialist field and the development team usually have completely different ideas of how the result should look. For these reasons, it is worth having the safety specifications on paper before the order comes. collected from the responsible ministry in Great Britain, HSE, for sin collect the error distribution collected from the responsible ministry in Great Britain, HSE, for SIL projects shows that more than 60% of the errors in the safety systems were built in before the systems were put into operation. Careful safety requirements specification in a product requirements specification and its updating in a customer requirements specification by the contractor helps avoid errors in the early phase of specification. May I hazard a guess at what you're thinking right now? The creation and updating of so many documents costs an infinite amount of time and money. And in fact, you should set aside a lot of time for careful planning and writing, approval and document management. But this work generally pays off. Take a look at it using the rule of 10. The economic cost for corrections in the specification is generally 10 times less than the cost resulting if changes are not detected until the start-up phase, or damages occur during plant operation. I would like to give you an example of this. To realize a safety function, a system planner designs a redundant level measurement for a protective system. The protective action should be triggered at the response of at least two of the three limit value measurements. When starting up the system, all three measurements fail, making the protective action ineffective. Luckily, greater damage can be prevented as this hot startup is attentively tracked by the plant personnel and an expert. The cause of the error was the previously unknown, even to the manufacturer, incompatibility of the selected converter and the process medium. As a result of the error, the converters were replaced by those of a different manufacturer. It takes two months for the specification and the SIL certificate to be adapted and checked. The R&I, wiring plans to be changed, the application software for the safety control to be reprogrammed, and the new sensors to be delivered. In addition to the added planning costs, the error also caused production downtime due to the delayed startup. A careful specification avoids errors where possible, or detects and eliminates them as early as the design and planning phases. We would now like to show you how a specification is created, and the major contents of a specification. First of all, ensure that a specification is being written for planning and development. Management of functional safety ensures this. Here, the responsibilities for the carrying out of the different project phases are defined. As you can see by the excerpt of a safety plan, the creation of the specification is divided into several project phases that are developed by the system, service engineering and installation team. What is expected in the individual phases of the executing positions is also specified in the safety management system. In phase 4, the organizational units system, service and installation specify the entire safety requirements in a customer requirements specification. This includes the safety systems, the safety related systems of other technologies, and risk reduction equipment. However, despite careful planning, errors do, errors do become evident during the course of a project, making it necessary to adapt or change planning documents. For this reason, the following must be defined in the safety plan. 
who needs to be notified and included when it comes to the evaluation of the error and replanning. As some time can elapse between the approval of reviewed planning documents, agreed upon plan changes should be announced to all those involved in the project, for example through manual entries in the planning documents, and approved. In so doing, ensure that all those involved in the project are informed of the change before the documentation is reworked. In accordance with the requirements of IEC 61511, the safety equipment requirements must be derived from the protective function and the safety planning. Using the overfill protector of the benzene storage tank as an example, we will now describe the major requirements of the protective function and then delve into the requirements from the safety planning. The protective function of the overfill protector is made up of the following components. Level measurement, safety control, engine fittings and connecting elements. Important requirements are the result of their function, measuring, triggering protective action and closing fittings, the operating conditions, for example, explosion-proof zone, sturdiness of the components against weather and other external influences, and the process connection, pressure, temperature, product properties. The first task is to describe the protective function to be developed. This protective function should end the fuel supply to the storage tank by shutting off the supply fitting when the level very high has been attained. In addition, the safe system state should be defined. The system is safe in terms of overfilling when the level in the storage container is less than the level high. When level high is reached, the fuel pump is switched off via an operational control and only released for supply when the level has decreased. In addition, in the event of failure on the operational control, the protection equipment should shut down the supply line. The risk assessment performed for this PLC, Protective Equipment, resulted in a required safety integrity level of SIL2. In addition, more precise knowledge of safe process states is required for the correct selection of suitable system components. Data on chemical media can be found in the safety data sheets from the manufacturer, and their behavior in the process can be determined, for example, by lab experiments. Select level very high whilst taking into consideration a measuring uncertainty 5% so that the fitting in the supply line closes before the tank can be overfilled by the pump. The system response time is made up of the required information processing times of the sensor, control of the actuator and the trailing fuel quantity in the pipeline. Since during the start, the operation and shutdown cause the protective function to behave differently, these operating modes must be fully described in the specification to make it possible to implement them in the safety control program. Other important content for selecting suitable components include repair times, test intervals, requirement frequency and requirements for application software. Due to time constraints we cannot go into detail on the software lifecycle. For more information, please see Section 12 of IEC 61511, Part 1. In addition, this safety specification also specifies the system behavior, defined as part of the hazard and risk assessment. For example, during a short circuit, a break in the communication line, or a power or compressed air failure. The safety function program can also access operating system messages and measurements for this purpose. When programming, ensure that the information provided by the operating system does not result in a malfunction of the safety function. IEC 61511 contains specific requirements in this respect that we cannot cover in more detail at this time. 
let's take a closer look at the requirements of safety function operation using a logic diagram. When there is a deviation of more than 5% between the operational and safety level measurement, the supply fitting closes, the pump is switched off and an error message is displayed for maintenance personnel. The planning team hopes to reveal any drift or measuring system outage by way of this plausibility test. This is a good thought. The main protective function for overfill protection of the storage tank is only triggered with a measurement of level very high. The pump is only released for operation when the level is less than high. If the system is shut down for a test, maintenance, changes or decommissioning for example, then the system should be put into a safe state with supply fitting closed and pump switched off. Random errors, for example component failure, and systematic errors, for example design errors, programming errors, maintenance errors or measurement drift, can result in the specified safety system not having the desired properties. For this reason, ensure that the safety system has the desired properties for startup and throughout the duration of operation by running suitable tests and performing maintenance if necessary. For this reason, plan for periodic tests during startup and operation to identify errors and malfunctions. At times, certain system states must be set and special tools used to perform the tests. Test requirements should be defined as clearly as possible in the specification phase. This way, in parallel to the safety system, suitable test tools and test instructions can be developed. In this example, three functional tests are planned to test the switching off of the pump at the limit value level high, mutual monitoring of the level measurements, and protective function, switching off the supply line at a level of very high. The planning also takes into account the test methods and timely processing of the employees responsible for running the test. Let's summarize the main contents of this module again briefly. The safety plan describes the responsibilities, the requirements from safety planning, the contents of the safety specification and the procedure in the event of changes. The safety planning can also contain the design inspection and design review conducted by a person independent of the planning team. The actual specification is derived from the protective functions and the safety planning. The protective functions characterize the system as regards its behavior during operation and when starting up and shutting down. In order to make a suitable selection of system components and to develop the system, the safety specification contains information about the process and operating conditions, as well as requirements for the safety integrity of the system. At this point, it should be mentioned that the IEC 61511 contains special requirements for programming the application software. Due to time constraints, we have not been able to delve into these. Important information for the safety specification can also be found in the following documents. Approvals, Official Regulations, Hazard and Risk Assessment, Safety Data Sheets, Standards, for example Sections 10 and 12 of IEC 61511, Operating Instructions from Component Manufacturers, Safety Manuals. If available, for example, in the event of changes, the old safety specification, SIL certifications, R&I, logic plans, application software documentation, connection diagrams, maximum value list and switch off list can also be used as a basis. In this module, you have learned how the safety requirements specification is derived from the IEC 61511 safety life cycle, which specification requirements result from safety planning, the setup and benefits of a safety plan and change management, 
and how to derive the specification of the protective function. Based on excerpts from the safety specification and test plan, you have been provided with ideas for your own specification. During the course of the summary, we have gone into detail about the important interplay between the safety planning and the safety specification. We wish you and your team all the best in the development of the safety requirements specification for your system.